Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SOLIDWORKS video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production tool-ready modeling of this uh, work flashlight in SOLIDWORKS. In the previous installment, we took a look at starting the surface modeling of the handle, and in this installment, we'll finish it. So we need to uh, model this, this tricky transition from the handle into this trigger area. We're going to do that by um, framing an outline for a surface fill to live in. So I'm going to create a, a boundary surface and then I'm going to create another helper uh, boundary surface that will help shape the surface fill so that way I can get a clean uh, opening, a clean patch for my surface fill to live in. So I'm going to create this boundary surface. And this is an example of a boundary surface where I've dragged the connector back. If you note, this is the two edges. And I don't really like the shape of the surface. You can see that all these lines, uh, kind of the flow of the surface isn't, isn't the greatest. So I'll just grab that, uh, what's called a connector, and drag it back to make a shorter surface where I like the, uh, the flow of the surface a little better. I'm going to intentionally uh, build the surface um, large and then I'm going to use a surface trim, so I just have a sketch on the right plane, and uh, I'm going to trim that back. The reason being, if we um, look at our curvature, we can potentially have some spikes or an almost an inflection here. You can see that it is inflecting. So by trimming back the bad portion, I'm left with just the good uh, surface. I'm now going to need to uh, knit all of this geometry together. So I have knit. Uh, these surfaces together. The reason I'm doing this is by knitting I generate new edges. This used to be one long edge and now I have two unique edges here. I'm also going to need to uh, in, or capture some of the draft reference surfaces. And I don't want to knit the whole draft reference in because I may I'm going to need it for future surfaces. So what I'm going to do is a copy surface, just an offset with a uh, zero distance. So I'll pick these faces And I'm also going to knit these in. The reason I'm doing this is that I now, if I go up and I hide the uh, the draft reference, I now have a closed five-sided perimeter. So when working with surface fill, I always want to try and um, have that perimeter. But I'm going to need one more feature before I can create the surface fill, and that's a guide surface. So the surface fill is going to be made tangent to all of these uh, edges here, but it's going to be contact, but I want to shape that. So if I just set the contact, the surface fill doesn't know what shape it should be in this region. So that's why I've created this uh, little uh, reference surface with a boundary surface. All I've done is simply grabbed a couple uh, straight line segments in a 3D sketch, and I've made them tangent to this line and tangent to this edge. I've now created a boundary surface from this profile to this profile along this curve, kind of example of a um, sweep with two different profiles along a, along a path. And now I'm ready for the surface fill. So in the surface fill, I'm going to set all of my edges to tangent here. Now I'm not using curvature. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the surface fill, and now I'm going to use zebra stripes and analyze the connection. So even though I'm I have set tangent here. I actually do have a curvature continuous connection along this joint. Likewise, I have curvature continuity here. We don't really see any um, sharp break. It's nice and smooth. I also have curvature continuity in this top edge. So I don't actually have to use um, curvature on the edges. In fact, if I was to add curvature, I may um, get a less desirable shape as this uh, surface fill gets a little more complicated. So I had to use surface fill here because of this five-sided patch boundary, but surface fill is a great tool for um, for conquering these kind of these transitions. I'll intentionally kind of model this five-sided patch, knowing that uh, surface fill is going to do a great job in resolving that. So I now need to uh, clean up some of those reference surfaces, and I'm going to use delete face with just the delete option to remove those reference surfaces um, from the model. And finally, I can knit. And now I'll need to work on the finished transition, or the, the upper transition. So just an example, more boundary surfaces, large four-sided packages, or four-sided um, surfaces. Here, created a new flat for the trigger front. 
And this boundary surface I've intentionally made long. I've gone from this edge along this edge with uh, this profile in direction one. Note the curvature to face for the correct uh, smooth transition. If we look at the zebra stripes, we have a really nice curvature continuous connection. And I've intentionally built this surface large because I'm going to trim it back. Then I'm going to knit it into the model. Once again, I'm going to do an offset of the draft reference surface, so that way I have a, a reference. I'm going to delete this bottom face now because I need to eventually combine all of this geometry together. And now I've knitted in and I have that open. So this is a four-sided patch, but I am going to use bound or surface fill here instead of a boundary surface, just because I am going from a you know, really dissimilar kind of shape. It does flatten out here. I find that boundary surface or surface fill is going to give a better result. So I have tangent on these edges. Note that I'm not using curvature once again, and then I'll evaluate. So even though I have tangency on, we see we have a really smooth curvature continuous connection along this patch. Finally, I can knit that into the model and delete face to remove the reference surfaces. So here's a modeling of the handle. We started with that large boundary surface, additional four-sided boundary surfaces, and surface fill to, uh, to get us out of those uh, tricky uh, five-sided and four-sided corners. So we're using surface fill to, to patch those, those boundaries, four-sided boundary surfaces to get to a position where we can use a surface fill, uh, overbuilt four-sided boundary surface. Note this geometry in here is really junky, so I'll just trim it away. I'm completing the blend with the surface fill. Gets us out of this uh, tricky modeling situation. So thanks for watching. Please follow the Demonic Group on LinkedIn, where we'll be announcing new videos in the series.